now, only on KGRA Radio, this is the Starborn Connection. Good evening, everyone, across the United States and around the world. You are listening to the Starborn Connection radio show right here on KGRA, your connection to anything and everything UFO, paranormal, anything you want in the quote-unquote weird sciences that we love. Uh, Tonight, we've got a great show lined up for you. Um, I was going to, and I don't know whether I said it in the uh, advertisement, but I was going to present uh, some more information from uh, uh, Ilona and and Ivana Podraska from Ali the Alien that they channel, uh, but uh, in reading it, it, it is so... Uh, how can I say it is so intertwined and and difficult to read from the sheet that I have to sit down and go over it and make sure that I'm saying what it's supposed to say. Uh, so I will get that to you either next week or the week after, depending on uh, how things work out here in the personal life. Uh, anyway, <laughs> our show tonight's great. Uh, we have a tremendous guest. Uh, Julia, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Good to have you here. Bill, how are you? Doing great. Uh, Bill Skywatcher, our producer. And we're also live on YouTube. So everybody that's listening and on YouTube and watching, um, looking forward to having a great show tonight with the guest, Ben Davis. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's get into it now. Now, uh, they say... Government mind control is real. Over the past few decades, we have learned about MKUltra, Project Monarch, LSD research in the late 50s and early 60s, and conspiracy theorists insist that Martin Luther King, John F. Kennedy, and Bobby Kennedy were assassinated by Manchurian candidates. I share in that belief. Uh, let, moving closer to our subject matter tonight, let's take a look at individuals who are manipulated and tortured by means of electronic harassment, psychotronic torture, or electromagnetic torture, which are just different names for the same form of mind control or surveillance techniques used to transmit sounds and thoughts into people's heads, affect people's bodies, and harass people. Individuals who claim to experience this call themselves targeted individuals, and many have joined support and advocacy groups, advocacy groups, sorry about that, in order to bring this info into public awareness. Wikipedia says that these intrusive processes include hearing voices in their heads, calling them by name, often mocking them or others around them, as well as physical sensations like burning. They have also Uh, described being under physical surveillance by one or more people. Now, many of these people act and function otherwise normally, and included among them are people who are successful in their careers and lives otherwise, as is our guest tonight. But they're finding these experiences confusing, upsetting, and sometimes shameful, but entirely real. Tonight we'll be talking to an individual we've come to trust. He's an official member of the Starborn Connection VIPs, having been on our show already, talking about the incident at Fort Polk for a hint. Uh, He has written a book about uh, targeted individuals and artificial intelligence, which is a very interesting title. Targeted individuals versus artificial intelligence. Sorry about that. Very fascinating title. It's in the form of of an expose filled with supported facts you will not believe, but they are indeed to be believed, and you will log off of the KGRA website with a whole new perspective, and it will be fueled tonight by our guest, Mr. Ben Davis. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Ben. 
He is an author and a writer. He studied creative writing, earning a BFA, a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from Full Sail University. Ben, in his own words, says, at 62 and still living in this world, it has become a daily chore to exist upon. One has to be wary of what you don't know or what you don't want to know. Once you discover how corrupt this planet has become, you may want to ask me how to survive the end game. Ben was also in the United States Army and worked as a combat engineer. He was stationed at Fort Polk, Louisiana, served in the 5th Infantry Division, 1st Brigade, 7th Combat Engineer Battalion. He graduated training on March 28, 1975. Happens to be the day the Vietnam War officially ended. A few years back, Ben discovered that he may have been part of a top-secret project that changed his life forever. Acquiring his Army personnel records, he discovered he was discharged as under other than honorable conditions. Ben was then convinced without a doubt that he was part of a top-secret project the Army decided to cover up. And that was the subject of his first book, The Incident of Fort Polk. He made his story public on November 30th, 2011 on The Kevin Smith Show. Now, Ben is seeking the truth in order to recover his honor and dignity that was purposely destroyed by Army secrets our nation is unaware of to this day. He was given a task to write a book that would stop the wars and the military's quest to rule the world 50 years after the incident took place. And according to Ben, he tells us that time is upon us now. Ben, how are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. That was a very good introduction. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. <laughs> I, I've got A's in all my English classes. But anyway. <laughs> okay. Well, well. Of course, someone someone else wrote the uh, introduction, though. I, uh, you know. Yeah. That, Any- <laughs> that, that's, you know, it took me years to put it all together. In fact, the first time I even heard about Facebook was uh, probably uh, 2004 or five, mm-hmm. And I had been on uh, my... MySpace, which was oh, yeah. really the first, uh, uh, you know, network, social network kind of thing. And and then all of a sudden, Facebook took over. Uh, <clears throat> I still have MySpace, but I don't know how they survive. I think they're all intertwined. Be, be very yeah, I, yeah. I haven't been on MySpace in, I think, over a decade. Wow. Well, let me get this out before I forget by the end of the sure. show. I want to say hi to Doris Neely, who's the mom of the publisher. Um uh, Neely Worldwide Publishing, who helped me try to get this book out sooner than later. And and I was heavily targeted electronically to prevent that. Um, and I wrote it in the book a little bit exactly how that happened. And, and basically, this book is um, facts, not fiction, not supposition or anything else. But it's, it's directly from the Google patent section. And I mean, even after I had gotten most of the content that I I felt was needed, then I started seeing changes. It was mm-hmm. immediate. The uh, links that I provided uh, for tonight's show uh, is just a scratch of the surface. And, and I wrote in the book that it was like five or six hundred something patents, but now it's up to a hundred or something thousand. <laughs> wow. it's ex- yeah, it's exponentially growing. And also, a couple of weeks ago. I was with um, Michael Vera on the LNM Radio Network. They do a live, you know, show too, and they had a, a guest, Doctor Michael Sala, and he's very, yeah, Michael yeah. Sala, no one well. Yeah. And I texted in uh, <clears throat> as a chat member um, a question that uh, has something to do with the patents because I have yet to see anybody put this out. Um, and he's his response was to the question. Uh, are patents part of the Trump um, disclosure, so to speak? And mm-hmm. uh, he had said that Trump has already secretly signed a memorandum to disclose certain patents that are going to lead to disclosure. What that is, nobody knows. Mm-hmm. But, but this wow. was this was right after I had sent it all to the publisher. Um, that uh, now these links that I've provided for your tra- chat room people to look as we talk um, became exponential. It, it went from five or six hundred to hundreds of thousands. Wow. And, and the web pages are different now. 
uh, <laughs> and the dates even changed. So uh, there's a lot of a lot of supposition as to exactly what we're allowed to see mm -hmm. and what we're going to see. Now, Ben, for those people who aren't in the chat room but who are listening uh, around the world, can you, at the end of the show, can you give the uh, URLs to those sites? Well, I could just say it right now. Uh, oh, sure. Okay. If you, if you go to Google Patents and type in keywords, um, mind control, remote wireless communication, biological application programming interface, those three uh, keywords will bring you up hundreds, if not thousands, of pages of mm. patent, all related. And if you're not a patent researcher, you're going to be befuddled. <laughs> no, really. It's mind-boggling how they have now changed that older format, which I have in my book. I'm talking about overnight. Wow. Mm. Uh, from what Dr. Sal had said. And, and now I'm like, wow. <laughs> Maybe I should rewrite this, but no, <laughs> I'm not. I'm I'm going to leave it at it. Oh, I'm, that's good. I've been 41 years in the in the following of gathering all this information, and I never really figured it out until this past year or so that I have been targeted. Now, what is a targeted individual? That's somebody that is purposely um, harassed, attacked in every form uh, format that you can imagine whether it's uh, wireless or uh, physical. And it's because the people are already wired around the entire planet. How many is unknown? I would say more in the more popular, populous areas, the major cities. And mm -hmm. what we see from the mainstream media is, is all fake. And President Trump, of course, is not one of the old cabal, you know, old warlord or whatever you want to call it. Right. And uh, it, it's, uh, that's where we're going from there. Yeah, I think it's impressive that people uh, people are misunderstanding uh, him. He, he is not a politician. Therefore, you know, his approach is completely different. And, and I think the people in Washington are kind of like, uh, you know, slapping themselves saying, what the hell's going on here? You know, and so it's, it's a good thing, I think, if he exposes that stuff. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, the book. Okay. Targeted individuals versus artificial intelligence. What what does that title cover? Um, it covers pretty much um, my surmise of what a targeted individual is. And I've been studying this for years. And, and when I went to college, well, back to college, um, and, and I've got several areas that I, I've been educated in, even since high school, architecture for two years, web design for two years, programming C++ for two years, and now I'm, I'm on a Mac, which is difficult. And, um, <clears throat> and so the, um, the processing part of gathering information, what I learned in college at Full Sail University is creative writing for entertainment. That's, that's the genre. Um, and when I was about done, I had three or four classes left. My wife came down with breast cancer and of course the end result was a uh, double mastectomy and, and, uh, it's, uh, difficult to try to understand why I was being attacked by somebody that I've married and loved. Of course it was second marriage a long time ago mm. uh, from the first one, but, um, it's, it's, uh, then you go into the pharmaceuticals and the American Me uh, Medical Association. And then you got, uh, uh, you know, the FDA, Food and Drug Administration. Mm -hmm. And what I came to conclusion in that book was we're all being poisoned, so to speak, by three basic chemicals in every prescription that you see on television, mainstream media news ads. It's all about drugs. I don't care what it is. It's still this arsenic, cyanide, and sodium cyanide. Mm. And then I got through all that, and then I realized what the mainstream media is all about. It's all about entertainment. They're entertaining us, no matter what it is. And then it led to uh, the research that I ran across was from the podcast that I was given permission to uh, transcribe and publish. And, and uh, of course, I, I've done that. And it's, it's very exact. 
And what you see in each chapter leads up to chapter eight, which is he became a target himself. Mm -hmm. And that's a really very important chapter because you will see uh, examples of what and how this invisible, remote, wireless communication does to you, which is everybody that you see on breaking news now. You know, you got the... uh, you got the shooter in Orlando Pulse Club almost a year ago, the day I published my first book. And, you know, it's gay day, and it's a gay club. Mm. Did, it, did it really happen? That's the question. Yeah, yeah. The big, the big thing is the, uh, that the school shooting up, up in uh, New England, I forget what the name of it was, but uh, they, there's big doubts about that because they found the same few people at several other, you know, major shootings that uh, that have been broadcast. So, you know, there's this feeling that uh, there might be actors involved there, which means you know, private it, actors. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's just a, a, a prime example of of what you don't see. It's, mm. it's hurting you. And these people are so caught up into the social media of uh, what this is all about. So, um, for example. The, the first link I gave y'all was um, the physical neural network liquid state machine utilizing nanotechnology. And, of course, this was patented in uh, 2002. And it said that the chemtrail started about 98. Mm-hmm. And one of your questions uh, earlier was about, well, you get these from shots. Well, it's possible. That might be the, the main chips. You know, uh, the nano size, I'm talking about atom size. It, it's, uh, it's so massively put out in images of, of this. Uh, you know, if your people in the chat room are looking at it, click on the link and scroll down below the abstract, and you'll see 29 images. And you can twist them and turn them any way you want to look. You can print them. And it's so simple that only an architect can understand that or Better yet, an engineer is the person that an architect does this for. Right. Now, I'm a little of both. So I do kind of try to understand it, but, but then you have the abstract. In one sentence, it's like 12 lines. How can you speak that? Well, let me give you an example. Here's the abstract. A physical neural network is disclosed, which comprises a liquid state machine. The physical neural network is configured from molecular connections located within a dielectric solvent mm. between presynaptic and postsynaptic electrodes thereof, such that the molecular connections are strengthened or weakened according to an application of an electric field or a frequency thereof to provide physical neural network connections thereof. Mm. I got to take a breath. (laughs) Yeah, I can tell. (laughs) A supervised learning mechanism is associated with a liquid state machine, whereby connections, strengths of the molecular connections are determined by presynaptic and postsynaptic activity, respectively associated with the presynaptic and postsynaptic electrodes, wherein the liquid state machine comprises a dynamic fading memory mechanism. Now, what does that mean? That's the abstract. Wow. It's, it's, it's beyond most normal people's understanding. <laughs> I must be normal. I have no idea either <laughs> what you <Yeah>. just said. <laughs> I, I know, it's but, but I, I'm just telling it like it is, and it's, and it's there. When you buy the book, and the ebook especially, you can just click on the link, and it'll take you to the Google Patch page that'll, that'll show you all these diagrams. And, uh, you know, uh, in fact, I'll click on one right now, and I'll show you what I see. Now, I got a question for you, Ben. You mentioned I, earlier, I'm sorry, Julia, that how were these candidates chosen? You said that it's pretty much widespread throughout the globe. Uh, are they using people that may be considered expendable as for an experimentation process? And what about those that are specifically targeted and maybe in the fields of, say, the media 
or some other uh, manipulative platform um, that they can be used as a, a means to whatever agenda that they're trying to get to? Yeah, great question. Yeah, well, let, me, let me go to this, Pat. It's called the Social Network Driven Indexing System for Instantly Clustering People with Concurrent Focus on Same Topic into On-Topic Chat Rooms and or for generating on-topic search results tailored to user preferences regarding topic. That's Facebook. Mm. That's any chat room, including YouTube or MySpace or any social media, tweet, you know, Twitter, and, and the abstract for that. Man, if I can hold this breath long enough. Hang on one sec. <sighs> okay. <laughs> A machine implemented. See, it all says machine, right? A machine-implemented social networking system builds up and repeatedly refreshes an hierarchy tree containing topic nodes. New nodes are added as new topics emerge in online public forums. Each topic node can link to an on-topic real-time chat room whose occupants are currently discussing the topic of the node. Another breath. A chat room can be pointed to by more than one node if the room is discussing multiple topics. Rooms can migrate from node to node as room topic dynamically changes. A system user who explicitly or inferentially wishes to be invited into a chat room, which is on topic, with what the user is currently focused upon, can do so by use of a node-seeking Automated process. Another breath. <laughs> the process. <laughs> I don't know. It's, just, it's really hard to understand. The process operates in the background and seeks out nodes of the hierarchy tree that currently have topics appearing to be the same as or similar to what topics the user appears to have in mind. Content browsing experience of the user is enhanced by addition of an invitations displaying subsystem that automatically invites him or her to co-compatible chat rooms, currently discussing topics the user appears to have in mind. It says right here, in mind. Wow. One of no, the, so, all right, so, one more sentence. One of the many topics that a user may inferentially have in mind is that of being at a given location as reported by the user's GPS and wondering what best to do at that location and time. Mm. That's my that, that, that is mind boggling. Does that mean does that mean that even people who um, aren't involved in the chat room at one moment can be made join to join the chat room and you know uh, manipulate information? Um well what it does is if you see the part about the node, now ask yourself this what is a node? In the computer right. world it's a it's a canister. Right. It's it's where um, data is stored or metadata is stored. And what they've done is they've mapped out your brain electrically, mm. electromagnetically, and this is just the beginning of um, profiling a person under topics and subtopics, and it automatically generates new topics to keep it going. In other words, it's a distraction. Uh, I see. Yeah. Keeps people involved when, you know, kind of like off guard. Hmm. So are they using these programs to target people specifically for, let's say, the EMF, um, electromagnetic, like where they get headaches? Is this where they're finding people? Um, some of the research that I've done, um, it's really, really very difficult to understand because you really have to be degnum near genius to, to figure this out. It's the autopoietic network system endowed with distributed artificial intelligence for the supply of high volume, high speed, multimedia, telesthesia, telemetry, telekinesis, telepresence, telemanagement, telecommunications, and data processing services. Whew. Man. I mean, they're, they're talking about they can read your mind. That's just about every, every way to get in there, too. And they can make things happen. 
I mean, uh, telekinesis is I'm supposed to be able to make you bend over and drop your keys. And I've talked about that before. I have been able to do that. I can't read your mind, but the machine is telling me wirelessly, remotely, or from a satellite to begin with, what is going to happen to you in the future. So huh. they, kept, they oh. kept me on my path for 41 years, pretty much. That is, it's, it's unbelievable. Wow. Now, how can one, uh, you know, how, how can one tell, uh, you know, for example, if someone thinks that they might be, how can one tell that there's something strange going on like that within their minds or within their brains? The first thing you have to do is recognize the fact that you are wired right off the bat. Everybody is. And if you don't read what I have in the book to prove that, you're just going to doubt it. You're going to be a, a, you know, a skepticist. Um, you know, you're going to doubt things. And then all of a sudden they'll pull the gaslighting on you. Mm. Uh, God, where did I just put my lighter down? I, I smoke cigarettes and, man, God, oh, you're looking around for 10 minutes and all of a sudden it's right where you left it. 99.9% of the time it's right where you left it. That's, uh, wow. that's gaslighting. Yeah. Mm. They talk about that in podcasts. That's kind of frightening because that happens to me a lot. It happens you to know. me too. too. <laughs> I think all of us. I thought it was just, you know, they call it brain forts. Well, well, let me tell you about the time travel part. Okay. I used to be a smoker a long time ago. I smoked for 30 years. I'm 62 now. So 12 years ago, um, I had problems of being targeted. And it had a lot to do with an invention that I was working on during dial-up speed, um, it was uh, audio, video, streaming of a foosball game. And I ran it right through the dial-up internet to my home, which I used as a server at the time. I had gotten highly technical, so to speak. And it was called foozcams.com. And then out of nowhere, um, a lot of people came into my life. My sister got Huge amounts of money for uh, renovating and updating the Daytona Beach area apartments, which were run down by, um, you know, um, transients or runaways, mm -hmm. things like that. And, and, the, and the properties became depleted. And, and so uh, my sister's family got involved. And sure enough, uh, all of a sudden, all these people came out of it. And they were, uh, you know, skilled tradesmen and i had hired a whole heck of a lot of them it's like 21 million dollars worth of you know money bank money yeah wow and and uh it, it got to the point where i was so distracted and so um you know diverted so to speak uh that i couldn't put my finger on it and at the same time i was uh doing the research and and, and trying to keep up with this patent and all of a sudden i got taken down this is part of the program that I'm writing about is the takedown program. It's run by the artificial intelligence. Yeah. And uh, I got taken down and the patent was never filed. The idea was stolen. Uh, I was given a, a, a Yahoo gaming server with administrative uh, privileges and access. And I worked on it for three years and I finally went live with it. That's when all this stuff crashed down on me they mm. it was after 9-11 and uh, uh and so it's just funny but i left my cell phone at home the day that happened and um i had to drive all the way back from titusville about 40 minutes and in this house in the middle of the woods next to the apartments that I was staying in it's one of my sister's new uh, acquirements and I saw over two dozen white cars with black you know windows on them and I went what the heck's going on wow you know, they had an emergency meeting and I suspected you know something going on all, all along and, and sure enough I caught them off guard because they didn't know where I was at without my phone <laughs> that's, Jeez. How, that's how much they've improved since then Wow, the wireless communications are all over the place, except for in deep, dense woods and you know, uh, federal lands and stuff like that. All right. 
Uh, I just want to want to remind everybody, if you're tuning in now, you're listening to the Starborn Connection radio show, and we're live right on KGRA, DB, Internet Radio, Alternative Talk, the connection for everything UFO and paranormal. So let's get back to the show. <laughs> I actually have a question for Ben quick. Uh, ben, sure. a lot of people might say they're being paranoid. Maybe they're actually... Uh, there's an awareness that they're actually under some type of surveillance or like you mentioned in the book, you might find a cup of coffee outside your door on top of your car, mm. like, uh -huh. <laughs> like, a, like somebody was there, but you didn't see them. And, right. and then maybe being misdiagnosed of having mental Ill illness to the point where now they're totally been broken down only to find out that this, this has all been part of a mind control experiment. So how does yeah, one separate that? that? That's that's heavy. When I when I realized finally uh, um, through the Data Asylum website that uh, the clues are were uh, out in the open, that uh, perhaps the uh, creators of such patents did sign up for this stuff, and they had to get it out without damaging themselves or violating a, a, a you know a disclosure agreement and further damaging themselves. Wow, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a crime to do something like that. And, and, and uh, our government has so much, let's see, uh, made a law against everything that we're no longer free at all. I mean, uh, if you become a convicted felon, which is a, a third degree, could be anything from, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, a, 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 a domestic uh, problem. They could go to third degree. And uh, even a domestic problem or a GUI, you're a convicted felon. You can't vote. And of course, you know, uh, Trump won the, uh, the election for the president of the United States. And it's so obvious that everything that they're trying to say against him and bring him down, it's not real. Mm. I mean, do we really know the actual vote count? Well, did y'all know how many people actually signed up and applied to be in the running for the president of the United States last mm. week? Right. Take, take a while, guess. I, well, know. I, I know of three who, who were not, you know, uh, really publicly known. How many, how many do you uh, think there were? It was over 1,100. Wow. And, of course, they set up the laws where you got to produce $5 million to be on the ticket. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all control. It's all about control. Now, is this, um, is this artificial intelligence real? Of course it is. is um, are we all being controlled? Of course we are. I guess in one way or another we are because, uh, you know, the simple fact that we watch the news and watch TV. Yeah. That's, one, that's one way that, uh, you know, control can be uh, introduced. That's true. That's true. But how do you stop that? That's the big question. I was just going to ask that. Yeah, <laughs> tur tur turning off the tube. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way. But um, you know, uh, and I've said before in other disclosures that I saw um, the Vault Seven powers, so to speak, back in 1993 when I went to my 20-year high school reunion. I saw it in a federal car. From a guy that I went to school with in junior high school, and we used to smoke weed together, you know. And I was gonna bring one up and burn one. With. Oh, what do you do, Joe? Oh, I'm a federal agent. Oh, we went back in my house, and he, you know, you know, show and tell. He showed it to me, cranked up his car, AC at about sixty degrees, pushed in the fax machine in the glove box, pulled out a laptop. I didn't even never saw one before, you know, in '93. They weren't even out yet. Right. And he pulls up a map traffic of the, you know, the Northern Hemisphere. He was in control of all the drug trafficking into America from the equator up. And he wow. showed me, he showed me three planes in operation, the military would run. And he even pulled up a, a dialogue box that showed, oh, there was 700 and some odd thousand dollars in cash. It was 350 kilos of cocaine on it, you know, 250 pounds of weed. Uh, and then the numbers started spilling out. What's it doing? It's counting the money in the airplane, dude. Wow. 
Yeah. Wow. Wow. And he, he gets rid of the map and shows a, it's all of a sudden it's focusing in a live feed from the airplane, the back of the head of the pilot and the co-pilot and where it was headed, Fort Knox, Kentucky. Wow. Oh, unreal. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it is what it is. Yeah. So, but how long has it been in, 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 uh, in the public? Well, I would say roughly around 9-11. Hmm. That was supposed to have been the first false flag takedown of, uh, uh, of the people, and, and it went awry. It, there are benevolent ETs that are helping. Yeah, I was wondering where the ET connection was because I know, I know it's there. Uh, it, it, they, they're either complicit or they're on our side, one or the other. Well, let's just say uh, a third of the human species has got some kind of ET. In, excuse me, two out of three people have DNA in them that are extraterrestrial. Hmm. What Interesting. About the, what about yeah. the blood? The blood type. Um, the blood type is the, it's the RH negative, which is probably the, the Dracos, uh, the Grays. But there, there are different kinds of Grays. There's just so many of them. Um, and even if that's real, you got to wonder why did they even implicate MK Ultra to begin with? Well, if you go back to um, what was it, uh, the Majestic Twelve, mm-hmm. MJ Twelve project, uh, and I researched a lot of that, and and. The, the guy that wrote the story about that was called The Matrix Documents by Valdemar Valerian. Of course, that's a, uh, a fake name. And, and, of course, he was offered uh, regional director of MUFON. Then he went to England when he just said, I can't do this anymore, you know, telling lies. And, and of course, I was interviewed by MUFON in 1999. Hmm. And I was even told my daughter was an implanted embryo. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah, well, I predicted it to happen 18 years before it happened. That's because I was shown the future. I was allowed to remember certain things. And during this span of time, now 41 years, that I would see signs and I would recognize certain things that would awaken the memory. So is it um, BT or is it military? I have yet decided that, but I do know this. We are all wired right now as I'm talking. Um, I got a quick question. Is there any relation to abductees that who have that claim to have had implants and then at the same time they seem to have some type of telepathic communication or connection to these extraterrestrials? Is it possible that then after they go through that experience, they're then taken to say a uh, secret laboratory or my labs to analyze uh, these implants and the methods that were conducted on these abductees? And then at that, at that point, their minds are wiped out of the memory in order to learn about the technology. An interesting question, yeah. That was a long one. I can just <laughs> basically say this. I personally don't recall anything like that, but I do have memories of being on a spacecraft, mm-hmm. of being older, and it's possible I could have already had a life on another timeline as a... Uh, part of a secret space program or a secret army, which is what I'm alleging to here in this book, and re-implanted, you know, back in time. Mm -hmm. uh, It was like an instant to me. And when I was debriefed, so to speak, is when I was interviewed in book one by the ABC agencies uh, and and told certain things. There's four hours I do not remember. And Mm, and do do we have that technology? Probably. I mean, here you give me. I'll give you an example. Back in the '90s, um, and I live in Daytona Beach, not even an hour away from the Kennedy Space Center. I had a friend of mine who was CIA trained assassin. He was in Vietnam until 1981. Of course, the war ended in '75. Right. And his job was to keep drugs coming to America. So a lot of it has to do with the drugs. And on top of that. The, um, the nanobots, I had symptoms once a year, every year, when he and I, the name was Slammer, he and I uh, recognized at the same time, it was like around uh, Halloween time. I always had these things popping out of my arm. And then one day it got caught 
in my hair. I got hairy arms. And he said, hold on. He got some tape, and he, psh! And we went inside and looked under his uh, Toys R Us microscope, uh, you know, um, what it was. It blew me right out of the water, mm -hmm. what, I, what I saw. And, and uh, that's, that's when, when I ran into this website about the data asylum and how to do the red wine test. I actually bought an expensive, you know, uh, photo, video, capture software in it, microscope, and I did my own test. And it, it, it blew me right out of the water. It made mm. me sick to my stomach for a week. Because I know what's inside of us. And there's nothing you can do about it. Ben, I have a question from the chat room I want to get okay. to you. Sure. Uh, uh, Libertas wants to know what entities of the government are participating in the programs you were referring to? Well, I can't really put a finger on them because I've never been able to see them. I just, I just feel them. Um, and, and even then, is it mind control? Are they pushing the nodes in my brain because that's, how, that's what they want to hear. And that's the final chapter in the book. It's called, This is What You Want to Hear. And it'll explain it uh, as exact as you can get to any questions. I, I mean, there's so many, they claim over 900 in our galaxy. Mm. There's like, a, what, what's a 30 or 80 something here on the surface or under the surface. And uh, I mean, it's just, it's so so vast of a, a, a topic that it's called a distraction. Are they even real? Well, I seem to think they are. Mm -hmm. Or I wouldn't have gone through book one thinking that, well, if I tell a story about Ben Davis and, and uh, what happened to me all these years and all these crazy things happened to me, and it boils down to now I found out what the truth is. Mm. Will disclosure happen? Mm. They are probably going to start out slowly. That's what I think. Probably, yeah, I agree with you. In part, in part, I think disclosure has already taken place, especially uh, among you know our crowd, people who you know have either experience or have been heavily uh, you know uh, involved in in this field. I guess I can say. Um, but w one thing I wanted to ask, uh, it, coming to Coming to my mind is the story of Frank Olson, uh, the guy, uh, I think he was a CIA operative who uh, was under mind control, and he was, I think he was going to blow the whole thing, he was going to tell, talk about it, and they kind of forced him to uh, act like he had a mental disorder, he was in, the, in a mental hospital, and then he wound up jumping out, I think it was the 19th floor uh, window. Uh, yeah. What's the fatality uh, power here? Can they actually make you do things like that? Well, I've always said to myself that I'm immune to that. Mm -hmm. um, certain people probably get to that point where, for example, John T. Vasquez, he wrote the book Incident at Fort Benning. And he had a, a, another witness by the name of Command Sergeant Major James Norton. And he had been to a doctor um, a week before he horribly died. I mean, everything failed. He even had uh, stage four uh, leukemia, everything. Mm. Um, so I don't doubt anything that our old cabal or old military uh, uh, has done. And I do believe that there was a secret uh, – military under the military i mean being a combat engineer and trained to in every field possibilities and stuff like that uh I, i've seen enough and i've done enough and i'll tell you this there is there is no other possible way to not have one because every military offensive has a plan a a plan b all the way to z mm. and that's that's fact it's in every conflict they've ever had now how can they get around the, the constitution well um you can't buy them out they've been bought out since forever uh obama fired like almost 200 of the top you know uh, brass that they have and if you look at what trump's going through right now he's got the best they had 
on his staff. So don't you think that uh, what he's done recently, everybody, including the mainstream media, are saying, ah, uh, he did this, he did that. That is exactly what I wrote about from the podcast that I got permission to and it explains it in black and white what is exactly going on. Mm. They're all mind control, but there's also a way to not be mind control. And we can talk about that on the next hour. <laughs> okay. I have a couple more questions from the chat sure. room. Uh, a person named Susan wants to know, you stated two thirds of the population has alien DNA, but her question is, is that two thirds of the population uh, does not have RH negative blood factors. Um, well, I can only say what, what I have been, I have secret um, communications with others that I, I won't go public with. And, and of course, if we're going to beat this thing, um, there's a lot of things I can't disclose. And whether they want to keep on attacking me, uh, they can. I mean, they, they've tried all they have. And, uh, I mean, I feel it. My dog lets me know that. She'll climb up on top of me when my wife goes to work in the morning and, and snuggles. She's never done that seven years, ever. And she hears things. She can smell things. Oh, yeah. yeah I maybe believe it. Another, maybe it's another dimension. But I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not an expert in the blood types. It's just the people that I uh, uh, acquire information from, a little bit of intel, shows me these things. And, and of course, they're, they're believable because, mm. you know, it's what you want to hear. It's not what I want to see. Now, Libertas also asks... Are you aware of other people from or in the military that are going through what you are? Um, yes. Um, I have a daughter. She's in the Air Force. Now, last Christmas she came here with her second grandbaby of mine. I got to meet him. They had you know, a blast. She was on maternity leave uh, or Christmas leave. And when she went back, she showed me the chip in her arm. Mm. And, and um, then she came back for vacation just a month ago, and um, it's been removed. And she, she couldn't wait to get out. And now she tells me, I'm going to make it a career, Dad. And I said, why is that? He says, I just don't, I, I have this feeling. I said, hmm. well, then here's yeah. your feeling, here's your feeling. And I told her, well, you remember when you told me when you were uh, – like a freshman, you want to join the ROTC program and you wanted to go to Air Force Academy. It's the smartest college on the planet and so on. Yeah. And I kind of, you know, she knew about my past and she knew about this and that and the other. And, and uh, she said, well, Dad, you can't beat him, join him. And hmm. I, said, I agree. I agree with her. So this time I said, well, are there really any jobs out here? Has Trump really corrected anything yet? Is there going to be? Uh, let's make America great again. And I said, you know what? If you can't beat him, join him. That's what I told her. Interesting. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, I, I mean, I, I, it, it, look at it this way. She's an MP. That's all they had to offer. That's all they've been offering. Uh, unless you're a combat engineer and very intelligent. Uh, you're going to get one of those, you know, IEDs blown up in your face if, they, if any other thing. But, but uh, out here in the public world, if you quit the military, um, at six years, she's already almost two thir or third of the into into the, uh, you know, the pension plan. Mm. And cops are going to be the first target if the SHTF hits. You know, <laughs> and I says you're better off being there. Because there's nothing out here. Mm. Now, and I agree. With you. Ben, if one is to believe that, say, MK Ultra, the the experiments that happened that ended supposedly in the seventies, um, if they were continuing the project, what do you think the purpose would be? Are they trying to say create a super soldier or use them as TIs in a spy capacity? What, what do you think? You know, it's. Uh... I, I get your I get your uh, answer on this one. It's, and, I, and I read it earlier. Um, the uh, mind control is to control the, the populace. Uh, and how deep that goes goes all the way up the ladder to Congress. Hmm. 
it, no. it even goes as far back as World War II, before the end of World War II, uh, and uh, Operation Paperclip, uh, where we set up all along for the Germans to come over here and take over America. That's possible. Uh, the time travel, w- was that possible? That's possible. There's so much at stake here that the entire human species will one day no longer be able to function because this machine is turning human against human. It is race war. It is gay. I mean, for Christ's sake, I was, I was a track star. I admired, oh, what's his name? Bruce Jenner? Yeah. yeah. Come on. How my control can you get? I mean, he was my idol. I was a track star. And now I'm going, huh, who the heck are you? Mm. And that's where I'm at. And where you go, as far as anybody else is concerned, you have anti-Trump, you got uh, Republicans against Democrats, you got libertarians, you got leftists, rightists, in between the middleists, anything you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, and then we got to go back one more step. You have to go back to what the, the medical society is doing to everybody. You know what I said earlier? We're all being poisoned to dumb the brain down, so we cannot respond. So this nanotechnology gets built up. It's not like uh, you see in Hollywood. Well, I'm gonna turn into zombie, and just, you know, it's not gonna be like that. It takes decades. To set up, nan- you're talking about nano size, atom size network. And I'll pull up a patent that'll show you how that works later on. Wow. Mm. Now, fake news is all tied into this too, as, as well as the possibility that news anchors might also be plants and everything that goes on in mainstream media to propagate some type of discourse so that people can take sides and we can have this divisiveness that's going on specifically in our country right now. Yeah, well, let me give you an example here, all right? Do you remember the movie by John Carpenter called They Live? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. All right. It's a classic. Um, It starts out, you know, with a small group of scientists in background discovered quite by accident signals being sent, then it breaks up a little bit, you know, uh, that, that artificially induced. There's the there's, these are the clues. AI, artificially induced state of consciousness. They were talking about this in the 1988. And then further on, when he discovers the glasses, uh, you see um, more things are coming out. There. The poor and the underclass are growing. They are keeping us at bay as long as they are not discovered. I mean, all these little clues they knew about in the 80s. So then... Um, and to be normal, um, and he puts the glasses on, you see these signs everywhere. They're different kind of glasses. It filters the frequency to keep you dumbed down, to keep you asleep. Um, you know, you look at a picture of uh, Come to Caribbean, and it says, Marry and Reproduce. Or a uh, men's apparel sign says, No independent thought. Close out sale. Hmm. Uh, consume. <laughs> and then... Then he, then he goes by uh, all these lengths of uh, signs that are everywhere on the buildings. You, you got work eight hours, sleep eight hours, play eight hours, conform, submit, stay asleep, watch TV, obey, sleep. And then it goes on to even say more. Uh, before he realizes, man, these are aliens right in front of me. God, mm-hmm. you're an ugly sucker, right? And then... He's at a magazine stand, and in the, in the magazine, when he puts a glass on, it says, Doubt humanity, obey authority, follow, no ideas, honor apathy, follow, surrender, stay asleep, no independent thought, watch TV. I mean, John Carpenter knew something. That's and, pretty, and, yeah. And, and this, this is what led to me to uh, the Data Asylum website. If everybody goes to dataasylum.com, and clicks on what he's trying to say. That's in book one. And, and it's like uh, in the color version, when he uh, is looking at it, you'll see in the background uh, a golf magazine. He's let it teach you. And then there's Edgar Case on ESP. Mm. And then there's another book that says Bermuda Triangle. 
and then two of a kind, Austin Strangler. So money is your God. I mean, it, all these clues just add up, and they keep adding up. And in, in part two, I'll tell you some more about what we can see right now on television that gives you these uh, keywords. I've been... Uh, Another question I have is, uh, you know, uh, some people say that we are existing in a matrix, in an artificial environment, and basically, uh, you know, reality is such that it's being created for us. Um, does that have anything to do w with the mind control situation? Um, kind of hard to say. I, I, I would like to believe that I'm in a real world, mm -hmm. but, but it's being manipulated through the mind control. And uh, the artificial intelligence has not learned enough yet. In other words, uh, Skynet has not been launched. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot more time. So eventually, eventually, uh, we will we will all be kind of like uh, these mindless uh, robots, or, or uh, you know, just people that are doing things that they're told to do. Um, or, or is that not a good description? Well, if you go to um, um, the uh, author of Singularity, he'll explain it more. Or even so, uh, Wes Penry papers. Mm -hmm. I've, I've read all of his stuff. It's oh, Wes Penry, yeah. Yeah, he's got like 5,000 pages of, of it. It's all put together. I don't agree with everything he says, but he's got the most out there. He won't do a, a, a live interview or anything like that and and. He got the same information that I got separately, but from the same sources. All this information is out there. You just got to look for it. And you don't have to believe me because it's fact. And this is what this book is all about. It will show mm -hmm. you. You just got to be smart enough to say, oh, this guy's a quack. You know. uh, well, no, no, I, I can't say that because, you know, you're presenting, you know, uh, what, 40, 40 plus years of research that you've done. All right. Uh, and uh, you know, I I I have been you know uh, kind of like myself I mean, I'm not talking about a lot stuff of things out do. there uh, in terms of you know the countries. mind control thing or you know the matrix idea or whatever. Uh, there has to be uh, you know something going on for that to be you know a popular subject matter. Uh, you know that that a lot of people are starting to talk about. Uh, and even connecting it to, you know, the UFOs and ETs that uh, we love so dearly. Uh. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, I, I'm still not convinced of uh, the Matrix. I'm still not convinced of all of the mind control. But I can see the targeted individual uh, is easy um, to control, including the cops. I mean, mm. look at all the stuff you see on TV. I mean, people catch it on phones. They post it. This cop killed somebody. This, that, and the other. And they're innocent people. Mm, yeah, that's yeah. What, that's what I'm here for. I'm, I'm to, to awaken all you people and say, hey, look, don't believe me, fine. You're going to be one of them. Yeah, it seems like oh. the cops are controlled because I never saw such beatings up, up for no reason at all. And I never saw that in all my years. Have you ever considered we the fact uh, the IQ level a cop has to have? It's 80, dear, just above dummy. Mm, wow, wow. That's the minimum requirement. Well, on that note, guys, we're going to have to go and uh, sell some stuff to keep the station on the air. Sure. Uh, so, so, I got to get uh, some more coffee. <laughs> ah, there you go. So we're going to go to a break. I want to remind everybody, uh, and if you're just tuning in, you're listening to the uh, Starborn Connection radio show, and we are live right here on K uh, KGRA, uh, the contact for anything paranormal ufo abduction you name it we have the info so we'll see you on the other side uh, hang in there Jimmy from Zipa. I want to talk to you about something that really bothers me. Snoring abuse. It's a real thing. You hear me? Abuse. And it's abuse that's been going untouched for far too long. Guess what? I'm going to touch it. I'm going to touch it like crazy. Wake it up and make it a known thing here. Snoring abuse is not a victimless crime. You go ahead and you snore, you're hurting others because you're taking away from their very important thing called sleep. 
People need their sleep so that they can function. You hear me? There's millions of people that are snoring night after night, and they're not doing anything about that. And if you're the one who's snoring, you better go to zipa.com and get this fixed immediately. That's Z-Y-P-P-A-H.com. You need to stop snoring abuse now. What about your children? They're not getting any sleep because you're snoring? Unacceptable. Order now. Go to zipa.com. That's Z Y. P-P-A-H dot com. That's happy Z spelled back. There are many sounds in your day-to-day life. There are sounds that wake you up. Sounds that make you smile. (laughs) Sounds that energize you. (laughs) And sounds that help you relax. But there are some sounds that can alert you to danger and can help save lives. Wireless emergency alerts, now on many mobile devices, use a unique sound and vibration to bring you information about severe weather events, amber alerts, or other emergencies in your area. With critical information from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know, wherever you are. For more information, visit ready.gov slash alerts. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. I have actually been on Balance of Nature for a year now. I have MS, and I recently had an MRI. This is the first year that I've had a stable MRI, so I'm thrilled. When I have an MRI with MS, usually there are glowing spots that come through, which is damage on the, on the nerves in my brain and my spinal cord. And when they're glowing, it means they're active. And then my last MRI, they pulled it up, and I honestly couldn't believe that it was my MRI. There was nothing glowing. And in fact, the dark spots were shrinking. They were healing. And the doctor actually said to me, I think we're in remission. I was so happy. I had no idea that that could be my reality. The new challenge will allow you to receive two months of Balance of Nature's fruits and veggies free. And we'll even ship them to you free. Call now for details. Call 1-800-2468-751. Or go online to balanceofnature.com. Use promo code TALK. We are the contact for alternative research topics. The Planet, KGRARadio.com. Welcome back to the Starborn Connection Radio Show right here on KGRA. Um, We're here this evening with uh, Ben Davis, who is talking about some pretty deep and scary stuff. Um, And Julia, I think you – were you ready to ask a question? Well, I wanted to contribute – I didn't know if I would do it – you know, I was thinking of doing it at the end of the show, but I wanted to – uh, because it's such a heavy subject, and I, I, I don't want to spread fear or anything like that, but I, I had a very short, maybe one or two minute protection prayer that people or meditation that people can do in the morning and at night to protect themselves from this kind of stuff, as well as entities, bad entities, but it could also protect them from the negative electricity, EMS, um, you know, because people have to understand the very, despite what's going on, if you believe it or not, we're very powerful individuals and we have a sovereign right to create our own reality and our own heaven on earth and not to be manipulated. So that's what I've been working on the past seven or eight months with Susie Byler. So I just wanted to do that like one minute meditation uh, that people can do. If they're, you know, they're afraid of this or they think they might be part of it. Um, but remember that you're a sovereign human being and you have power. Uh, and you can do it through meditation and meditating on your soul. Your, your uh, what do you call it? Your, uh, you breathe in your soul. You know, we did an episode on soul breathing with mm-hmm. Max and Susie. So do, can I do the meditation real fast? It's, it's a minute. Now, do you mind, Ben? I don't mind, sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Take, it's, take it it's, away. Okay. So, you know, you do the soul breathing. So you imagine your soul <laughs> in a ball, and then you uh, you breathe through your abdomen, and you try to get, I think, seven counts, and then you hold it, 
that's called the God space. You want to hold it for maybe five counts and then breathe out through your mouth about seven counts. And that's how you do it about a couple times to you really relax. And then you, you imagine the white light coming from the center of the universe, from source, a uh, beautiful white light. Uh, hitting your crown chakra and then going all through your body and it also anchors you to the center of the earth so you want to imagine maybe and it can be any color you want um, where your ankles are maybe beams of light uh, that anchor to the core of the earth so you're grounded and you're also imagining this huge uh, ball. This it, It's like an egg shape around your whole body. And it's white light and it's emanating through your whole body. And then you call on Archangel Michael and his silver sword. He has a blue sword, but I guess he also has a silver one. <laughs> and he comes with the silver sword. And you see him walking around you and, hit, uh, and tapping with his silver sword so you have a a silver shield it turns you have the white light and then on top of the white light you have a layer of silver armor uh like a silver shield above that and then you call in um archangel zekiel and he brings in the violet flame or the violet flame of Saint Germain, and you imagine that violet flame coming in from your crown chakra and and engulfing on top of the silver shield. So you've got you've got your white light in an egg shape around your body. Around that is a layer, the silver armor. And then after that, you imagine a flame, uh, the violet flame, and you ask for protection from all your angels and your guides throughout the day and you can do this in the morning and at night it could be 50 seconds a minute um and then of course you know in your meditations i i tend to verbalize um my intentions and manifestations and i really have great days i mean i'm all i'm usually pretty positive i do wake up extremely depressed sometimes and i get out of it right away because i do this so that can help you you really want to start you know, gaining your power and sovereignty back because we own this earth, you know, and all this other stuff, it's going to go away. You know, I definitely believe we're ascending and, but it's, it's strong now because it knows it's lost, these organizations. I don't know, Ben, if you understand that, like, you know, in, they know they're losing. So, so it's, it's more intense now. Uh -huh. I see it with a lot of personal friends. A lot of people are getting attacked from all this stuff. But, you know, definitely I, I use that as protection. So go ahead, Ben. Sorry. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> I uh, get carried away with my stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I studied the uh, Mind Control Recovery podcast uh, vehemently. And uh, I got the clue from the Data Solemn website. And then I started writing down the names of the Hollywood flicks that weren't really great you know, um, movies, they were B-grade or so, uh, made out of the United States, and it's not in control of Hollywood. And and I'm not trying to be a, a, um, singling out people, you know, uh, but who owns Hollywood? Yeah, um, right, right. That's it, always been a question. Always been a question. And and you can you could call it what you want, religion-based or or military or both. And you can go down any road with that. And so, for example, um, recently, Steven Spielberg backed a series called um, Extent. Oh, he, yes. Yeah. And it was on CBS. And after it was a great show. two seasons, yeah, they, they, they dropped it. But, but if, you, if you read between the lines and the way it's explained, you can see – and actually agree with what I'm trying to say is the clues are out there. They just don't want to get the people in trouble that are behind all this. You know, uh, and Halle Berry is, is uh, an activist, and she's had problems um, <clears throat> throughout her life, and, and she had a, a, a launching of her, you know, 
career in the uh, the early uh, 2000s. Um, and and then you go to uh, Netflix. Netflix has every kind of sci-fi you can ever think of. In fact, they had uh, a one called Humans. Those are uh, the uh, artificial intelligence in Android bodies. Of course, they got oil and not blood. <laughs> Uh, but but the clues are still there. There you're always there. You know, for example, uh, the um, back to the uh, they live. I mean, when Roddy Piper saw these words, and then he goes into a shop, and there half of them are saying, "Oh, there he is. He's got glasses on." You know, and then uh, he gets attacked outside by two cops, which were alien, and he beats him up because that's what he did in the day. And you know, Mr. Wrestler. <laughs> And then he grabs a gun, he goes into a bank, there's a clue, the bank, and half of them in there are ETs, and he shoots the ETs up and leaves the humans on There's a clue right there. Mm. You know, and, and so he goes outside, and there's a drone sitting up there. When did they come out with drones? I mean, holy cow. You know, Ron, uh, Carpenter had some very good intel. So, uh, and, and all these um, secret space program uh the the whole thing is this you gotta follow the money always you yeah to, you have to ask the question where is the social security money at well they kind of figured you'd be dead by age 62 uh, i can now retire i'm not going to get crap uh for the rest of my life and i can still work full time well mm. i'm getting too old to do that and i do very physical work i'm talking the last job I did was 145 days in a row, hanging 54-inch vinyl wall covering in hotels. It's good money. You know, it's two, three grand a week. And where is that money? Well, have you ever asked yourself, uh, every time I get a paycheck, it's gone before I even get it. Oh, yeah. uh, wait a minute. Something went wrong with the car. Uh, I got double billed for some reason. Don't you <laughs> <Yeah>. get it? <laughs> I mean... I mean, I went to an auto parts place, and, and the guy, you know, family, so to speak, he fixed. Um, I have a two-year-old van with 60,000-mile warranty. It hits 62,000 miles, and check engine light comes on. Oh, yeah, I've had that happen. I have happen the Cadillac. The, thing. the same oh, yeah. thing happened to me $3,000 yeah. later. That's not gaslighting. <laughs> That's actual fact. So, so don't you think they know that they can program a computer to do that or the AI can attack that? remotely well can they well i would say yes because the brain of a, of a vehicle today is wireless right straight from the satellite they can make you turn your car and crash or for example like this i'm driving down i-10 left houston it's pouring down rain there's four lanes of traffic headed eastbound i'm on the inside lane which is where the retainer wall is and then the guy in the lane next to me and two cars up starts spinning sideways because somebody in front of him is going sideways. And I mean, they're going in every direction. What do I do? Well, super soldier kicks in. And I get over into the emergency lane next to the wall, and here's a pickup truck. And I said, don't move. And it didn't move. And the guy had his door open. He was sitting there. And, and when I drove past, I looked in the side mirror, and boom, it fell off the wall. Hmm. Really? I mean... These kinds of things happen to me all the time, and uh, it, it is what it is. Now, Ben, one one thing that I, I wanted to ask, I I, I read, uh, and I forget when I read this, but I did read it about, uh, you know, mind control of children. Is that a fact? Do they actually, uh, you know, innocent children, do they mind control them? Um, well, in my first book, I inserted uh, uh, an article from uh, Finland. Uh doctors that uh, wrote this in 1999. It's called implants. Uh, and it, it even stated that they had been putting implants into human babies when they're born in the United States, starting off with the mind control program in 1947. Wow. Yeah. Now, here's, here's, here's an example. And now you're wondering about the technology, huh? too. How can they yeah. do that? Oh, of course, yeah. Also, why I'm not um, perceptible to them um, is I was born in a house, not in a hospital, 
in 1955. The hospital was not open. Now, when you we give birth to a, a child, you know, uh, the excitement, the pain, and the agony, and all that stuff, uh, they take the baby, and they hand it to the nursing staff to clean it, clean it up. While you get stitched up, and the husband's going, oh, my God, I saw my first baby born. I remember that. And I kept my eye on the nursing staff because my baby looked like a wet mullet going around and around. Mm-hmm. And she was looking right at me and couldn't see, but she knew that was me. And then my sister comes in, and she's got tears in her eyes. That's the best birthday present you could have given me. Same birthday, <laughs> by the way, my <laughs> poor sister. And I, I, I moved my eyes from watching my child being born. Wow. And ever since, I've never been able to show her how to do anything, tell her how to do anything. She, I know how to do it, Daddy. I'll get a bicycle with training wheels. I don't need those. When are you going to let go? I'm standing 30 feet behind her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I take her to the skating rink. Um, I could do this, Daddy, and she never fell down ever. I mean, things like that. And what really got to me was, when she was of age, uh, third grade, I think, um, she was becoming more and more aware. And it was a new school. We had moved or lo- relocated. And uh, <clears throat> so p- parent, um, you know, teacher parent day came about, and uh, they're going to show off what they do. And the first thing I noticed, my ear pricked up really heavily, my hair arm stood up, is I noticed a camera in the room. Two weeks after school had started, I had, you know, introduced a teacher to my daughter. Mm-hmm. And, and um, <clears throat> so this teacher was real nervous. It was obvious. She, she couldn't, you know, not shut up. <laughs> and she says, oh, Mr. Davis, um, I just wanted to let you know that we were, we were awarded a grant from the federal government to uh, monitor our class and, and, and they chose your daughter to teach the class in third grade. Oh, my God. And I, I, didn't, wow. say, I didn't say anything except, okay, hmm, that's cool. And I knew right away that I've been being watched all along. Hmm. Um, and, of course, you know, she's always been a straight-A student. I could never, ever have a problem getting her up and ready for school. I, I can do I can feed myself that. You know, holy cow. I mean, she was there every single day her whole life, including all the way through, you know, her senior year. She went to uh, Daytona Beach State College, uh, got her AA degree almost. I think she was a couple of classes short, but, um, you know, she went into the Air Force directly since then. Now, those years that were lacking, she's always, uh, I don't know if you call it underachiever, overachiever, I, get, I forget how that works, but she mm-hmm. knew y'all about earlier how uh, they can label you as schizophrenic. Yep. Uh, it goes with the DSM-3, 4, and 5 manuals now. I they, have it on the bookshelf, yep. <laughs> yep, yep. I mean, I do too. And, and um, they can actually label you if you say or do the wrong thing. And I have to be very, very careful on how I uh, promote my life because I'm being targeted mm. still. Just to get this book out was a massive operation. I had to unplug the internet hard line. I had to shut off the Wi-Fi just to get it done because I would transcribe four hours of a podcast, save the file as Word document, and I would wake up the next morning and I was back to square one. Mm. You know something? Um, <laughs> Daryl Daryl Neely, the person, uh, your publisher, he said that this book – because he mentioned this in the chat room just now, a few minutes ago. Uh-huh. He said he went through a lot of issues with this book, problems with his computer, all wow. kinds. Yeah, he had all kinds of things happening to him, uh, getting this book uh, prepared for release. I so, believe it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Even today. <laughs> yeah. Now, I got a question a, a little bit, uh, a little different here on a different topic. What okay. about weather modification? Um, the, is there any evidence that maybe chemtrails may be linked to this, uh, the um, release of nanotechnology? I'll put that in the book. It's, um, <clears throat> it's, it's right after, uh, the podcast. 
Um, and it's called, hey, I'm scrolling through it right now. It's called, uh, let's see what chat, that's eight. <laughs> well, I got a long way to go. <laughs> okay. Page 122, Air Command and Staff College, Air University. Operational defenses through weather control in 2030 by Michael C. Boger, Major, United States Air Force. Mm. A research support report submitted to the faculty in partial fulfillment of the graduation requirements. Advisor, Major Paul J. Hoffman, National Air Force Base, Alabama, April 2009. This was declassified. Now, in the original book, Incident for Polk, um, it was entitled something else. And in this uh, reinsert of the content, uh, it says what I've just said, operational divisions through weather control in 23, 2030. But the original one said weather modification program. Um, <clears throat> it was uh, white carpet. And that file disappeared from my computer. Mm, it's, only, wow. it's only, yeah. And so here we go with that timeline thing I was telling you about earlier. The weather modification program does state word for word. It's inserted in the book, and I reinserted it in this book because this time I got it all out there. It's all in here. And it says the future of nanotechnology will enable creation of stratus cloud formations to defeat DEW and optically a targeted attack on the United States assets. The mm, solution no. to the weather control problem involves <clears throat> network miniature balloons feeding and receiving data from a four dimensional variation computer model through a sensor and actor network. The network of diamond wall balloons enters the area to be changed and then both measures and affects localized temperature and vapor content. This system effectively shortens the control loop of an atmospheric system to the point it can be managed. The capabilities in the diamond wall balloons are based on the future of nanotechnology. This was in 2009. So the table of contents, and I'll, I'll, I'll show where it's at. It says, uh, I give you nanotechnology. <laughs> wow. And what so are, they actually put it in there. What about FEMA's role? Because uh, earlier we spoke about oh, yeah, FEMA, yeah, right, and right, Hurricane right. Matthew, and maybe it was a training, a vehicle for FEMA to train. And is it possible that they're preparing for an event that is yet to occur that may also be uh, a false flag event? Okay, let, let me uh, be very candid here. I have some intel. And, and I think we spoke for this before the show that I have to keep some of this, uh, you know, out of the public because it's not over yet. Um, Hurricane Matthew was never a Category 3 or 4 hurricane. Mm. And that tells you right off the bat the mainstream media is obviously lying. Now, I posted on my Facebook page the Weather Underground app. It shows live um, you know, updates. It's within a minute or two. Um, the GPS location of, and, and I weathered out the storm. I live in a home in uh, in Daytona Beach. It's a uh, it's gated security, you know, golf course community. It's over five thousand homes, and it, I got like a thirty foot tall roof. Um, and uh, my father went through before he died. He went through Andrew. Down in Miami, and he yeah. told me, "Son, I went. I went through that too. You did, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We were. Uh, we lived in through. Florida, yeah. uh, 1992. We had just arrived there from New Mexico. I started oh. my education at Nova Southeastern. Uh huh. Yeah. So we were. Uh, we were there. That was our greeting. <laughs> oh <laughs> man, what a greeting that was! My father yeah. went down there to um, look after his older brother, uh, who had had a, a mild stroke. Um, and of course, was you know, wait, health insurance doesn't cover certain parts. Ha ha ha. <laughs> that makes sure you're broke. And um, you know, he was he was bedridden at home, and um, so he went down there to take care of me. He said, "Son, it took six weeks 
to get the lights back on at North Miami. Yeah. That was 135 mile an hour winds there. And so he put fear of God in me when uh, Matthew was coming up the coast and nice and slowly. And, and my wife is a dietitian. She was ordered to stay at the facility mm-hmm. or get fired. And here I, I'm, I'm at home and just wrote the book. I was at the end of the book, The Pink Mile. And um, I was scared to death. The lights went out just after midnight. And it was howling. And all I could think of was this huge roof come crashing down on me and the dog. Mm. I, I stay. I stuck around. I stuck it out. Where else am I going to go? It's the same thing that happened with uh, uh, that Hurricane Floyd that did a right turn, Clyde, and, and evacuated everybody away from the East Coast as far west as they could go. I was in that. Twelve hours to go two and a half mile, two and a half hour drive. Yeah. Yep. 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 And so, so sticking this out and recording the data on my phone, I was sending to Facebook and all that until the cell towers went out. Um, <clears throat> and then out comes the generator and all this and that and the other. Well, I kept going, man. You know, it's it sounds scary. It it, it feels scary. You are scared. It's in, you're in the dark. You have you know candles going and whatever batteries i mean the batteries are gone before i even got to the store to get them (laughs) um they didn't prepare for that and and the whole time all i saw was 59 mile an hour winds Hmm. like that the uh news channel before the power went out says um matthew is going north northeast it's just off the coast of new smyrna and then daytona well I, I say no, it didn't, because the under, underground weather app showed me it did a left turn, Clyde, come right on top of us, right here in Daytona Beach, you know. And I got a picture of that on my Facebook page. It, the edge of the hurricane actually hit us, and that's the strongest part. Mm-hmm. It never hit hurricane category one, not once. And that doesn't mean certain bands didn't have higher gusts and so forth, but also in this uh, uh, weather operation white carpet shows the uh, the devices that they have to create this nano-sized uh, particles that they're creating and making not only wind and rain, uh, but lightning. Mm-hmm. And it, it, I mean, they actually have um, like drones that are tethered to, uh, you know, they call them uh, hurricane hunters. You know, they're lying to us because the next morning, you know, all went well. The lights came back on about, I don't know, 19 hours later. Uh, and I get a phone call from an old roofer of mine. He says, Ben, what are you doing? I said, I'm raking up the yard. It wasn't much of a storm. He says, I'll be dang. Said, what do you mean? I'm getting a phone call every five minutes from insurance carrier that, that we're already signed up with and to go put roof overs, you know, quick temporary tarps over roofs. And uh, are you in? I said, how much? And, you know, he gave me a good song. I said, yeah. I dropped the rake. I'll be right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I worked for five days. I did 17 roof overs. And I was out of shape. I had a contract coming up in another week. I, I really didn't need the money, but you know what I saw? Only the mobile home parks of senior citizens that got hit. Hmm. for 35 miles up and down the East Coast. And I talked about this with uh, somebody else that I do intel with, and and uh, this person showed me satellite access to what they did. Um, it's a Earth Defense Forces, and <clears throat> they lifted up the hurricane from, um, I think it was like Bermuda, all the way until it hit North Carolina. Mm. And here's what, here's what FEMA does. FEMA will not put out any money unless there's a direct hit. And what did they do? They had four states, five states, all in conjunction. They had National Guard activated. They all had it ready to go, uh, a nice um, organized evacuation because of the uh, storm surge that they said. Right. Well, I got a friend of mine in New Smyrna Beach. It, it, you know, two feet will flood his pool. It never had a storm surge. 
the mainstream media lied about that too. So um, that's what I know hands on about, you know, the way the modification program, they can make this thing do anything it wants. Yeah. Yeah. Now what's in it other than weather warfare. Well, we need to disclose that. Well, I mean, you know, weather weather modification. They used that in the Vietnam War. I mean, you know, they would they would bring these tremendous, tremendous downpours over, uh, you know, the uh, the trails that the uh, Vietnamese soldiers were using, um, and you know, sometimes they'd even bring it down over their own soldiers. Uh, you know, they used that then. Uh, I think they used it during the the Gulf War. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and and by that time, by the Gulf, time the Gulf War came around, it was it was more or less uh, perfected. Uh, but they can, I believe you, they can do just about anything with the weather that they want to. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, the, uh, yeah. the the white carpet part of uh, weather warfare says directed energy is fast becoming the popular weapon of the future. Mm-hmm. Along these lines, optical intelligence is still and will remain to be a critical method of targeting. See, that, there's that word, targeting. Well, yep. it is a military word. You'll hear that in uh, on television. You'll hear it in the news, the mainstream media news. You'll hear it in TV shows. All these words, these keywords, are trying to tell the people, wake up and read between the lines. It, we need to we need to establish uh, an organized, you know, official inquiry about what our government is spending our tax money on. I mean, go back 60, 70 years. Where did it all go? Mm. And what is it on? <laughs> and you were paying for all this stuff to, to kill each other. Sure. I hear you, man. So what what about uh, you know a lot of people throw the 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 word Illuminati around uh, is is that who is behind the government or is it just purely the government's uh, interest in in controlling our, our people the people? It's so massively deceptional to to even believe in anything anymore, including religion. Uh, you know, for example, uh, I had to borrow money to go back to college, and I owe a lot of money. And uh, here we go being targeted again. Mm-hmm. I filed uh, jointly with my wife. She makes X amount a year. She pays her taxes. I lost money last year. I lost thirty five grand. That's because I haven't been paid yet. <laughs> I wonder why that happens. <laughs> right. you know? and, and so because of the FAFSA thing and because the last several years I haven't been able to keep up with the payments, they intercept the money and keep about six thousand dollars of my wife's money. So in the law it says um, she's now an injured spouse. I have to claim form eighty six, whatever, you know, and and uh, she has to apply for her money out of our combined taxes. And uh, if that isn't being targeted, I don't know what is. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and the people that owe me money, well, it, it's a hit or miss in, in the construction world because most of them are Mexicans. I'm not trying to be, you know, anti-biased or anything. I'm just telling you like it is. Trump knows. He owns hotels. And the yeah, hospitality renovation true. industry is billions of dollars just in America. And worldwide, God knows how much they're really doing over there. They're blowing them up, but, you know. Yeah. Somebody, after all this mass migration, has to refinance all of it. Those are the people we're looking at is the banks. That's where I see. Yeah. Unbelievable and fascinating and scary. <laughs> and especially Trump's against all of them, really. But don't you think he would have some kind of help? Yeah. And, yeah, and the people he's got on his staff are trying to get him out because – you know, this and that and the other. I mean, is it even real? Did Hillary actually get the popular vote? I doubt it. I doubt it seriously. <laughs> now, do you do you have any information or, or have you come across any information in your research about uh, the the process called subliminal seduction where uh, 
the government and or advertise affiliates uh, hide messages inside commercials, inside pictures and newspapers and stuff like that, uh, that kind of keep our minds focused on on sex and, uh, you know, pleasure instead of dealing with, you know, reality. Have you have you read anything about that? Um, I probably ran across it in some of these pats, you know, uh, the system for producing artificial telepathy, uh, and, and especially in um, the social network-driven indexing system, Pat. Mm-hmm. That massive. I mean, it, it's it's so depth that I can, I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, and I'm not even a quarter of the way down yet, and it's still growing. I mean, you got to be a genius to figure half this stuff out. And, and I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to say I am, but I'm smart enough to know that what I do read um, educationally speaking, is um, is right there in black and white. And if it's going to take more than just me and you and the rest of the world to gang up and beat this system, then we need to inquire on the system and explain where the heck all our money went, not because some terrorists did this or that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like you said, and, and like it, what is very true, follow the money. You have to keep your eye on that. Yeah, it is. Quite a bit. Ben, I got a question. Uh, we hear a lot recently about cyber warfare. And I'm thinking instead of just using what we know as, say, a Trojan or some type of virus, is it possible, I, I, like I said, I'm, I'm just speculating, that they can use an AI-based uh, program to infiltrate and act as a cyber warfare technique to do what they need to do? In other words, it would know when to to avoid or to penetrate to get through a, uh, the systems a defense system just uh, almost like get, a self-aware ai type of uh attack let, let me give you a, a, a more accurate uh explanation here okay okay the nanotechnology that are in the patents um goes after the brain's five senses you have that's your uh, uh resident signature you, your your sight, your sound, your smells, your taste, and what you feel. Uh, and that other patent already included telepathy, telekinesis, and all that stuff. So those are the other six senses, right? Well, just imagine this. You're spending all this money for security programs. Um, Mac Keeper, for one. Um, I found out was why I was being hacked so easily. They piggybacked on it. And I let them. I let them know that, and I got refunded my entire year for it. And they're work, They're going to work with me once this book goes. I'm going to. I'm going to mail them my my external hard drive. <laughs> I've, learned, I've learned through the years. After two lightning strikes on this home, three computers blown to pieces, that everything from proving that I actually created Skype and this and that is gone. Uh, but I do have backup. It's not anywhere in my house. It's not anywhere online. And they're gonna they're gonna go through with a fine tooth comb. Well, can I trust them? Huh? It depends. Now, just imagine this: they can actually see what I explained about your facial expressions, where your eyes are looking at at the web page in this pad. That they can determine what to suggest in a topic or a sub topic or a reply to those things. It's uh it's uh Sam talking to Sally, and uh, Jill talking to Jack, and they put them in different nodes of your brain. Now, they can actually see your path. So why are you spending all this money? It's to keep us broke. So they don't have to come up with all the money to figure it out. The Vault 7 thing, that's the truth. That is definitely true. Uh, I saw it in 1993. You heard that in the earlier hour. So so what is safe? Really? So, they know what you're doing. So, Just thinking about it. So is it possible that, say, a person that's sitting in a basement in North Korea utilizing a computer, they can somehow transmit through a frequency and manipulate their senses just simply being on, say, a laptop that's being used as a resource or a tool to get to them and mm. to control their minds? Um, like I said, uh, if you look at book one, where I came up with the numbers of just a little over $6 trillion. Oh, excuse me, six. Yeah, it was $6 trillion that was missing from 
the Pentagon. Remember they announced that yep. oh, summer last year? Mm -hmm. I'd already written about it in my book. It was $6.3 trillion what I came up with. And, and where is that model? We need to audit it. And any time Trump tries to, uh, to do something, they are counterattacked by the, the powers of people, the money. It's all going to come to head. Eventually, uh, the banks are going to, you know, collapse. So I don't want to start a, a let's go to the bank because you can't get any money from the bank. You can't get more than $5,000. I know. I get $10,000 checks a week, and, and they try to take my money over the week. <laughs> That's Wells Fargo for you. Yeah, well, I thought y'all fired them suckers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and see, I get smart. I'm smarter than them because I take a screenshot of my online bank account and I get the supervisor on the phone. And I said, look, that $7,000 that I'm in the hole, you better put the 10000 back you borrowed to make money off of me because I got a picture of it. Give me your email address and I will send you the screenshot I got of my huh. Saturday bank account. And then that was cleared that I deposited the day before. Hmm. Oh, so they put me on hold. Eight so, minutes later, they came back, <laughs> your money's right back, and, and the evidence is gone. <laughs> so one one has to fight back viciously in order to battle against this stuff. I mean, it's vicious. It's so vicious. Uh, even my publisher said, you have no idea how hard it was to get this book out, wow. and it's out. See, and they, and they can't stop me now. Ben, you know what? I'm looking, I'm also thinking of the flip side of this and how this could be used in a positive means when... I think Big Farm has a lot to do with this, too, because a lot of this nanotechnology, it can be used for uh, medical practice. It can, it can help individuals overcome uh, maybe a debilitating disease or some type of other neurological disorder. And I think it's all tied in. I mean, they could be using this in so many... Um, um, medical applications, but it's all about the industrial military complex. Um, yeah, you know, that there are some good things out there that um, that are um, are for the, the the benefit of human. So they're, they're working on both directions, and here we go with compartmentalization. They uh, they've been working on the medical side all along, mm -hmm. and and. For example, uh, Johnny Depp uh, um, movie, what was it, Transcendence, made it look good, but there was a bad side to that. And, and that's what uh, Kurzweil had wrote in the book Singularity. And they expect it to happen by the year 2029. And I say all along for 41 years, it's 2026. And mm. I, I'm going to see 2026, even though I've said all along – when I write this book, I'm, I'm going to be out of the equation. Well, does that mean they're going to kill me? Oh, heck no. I'm just not going to be part of any more research because I've introduced what it takes to stop this threat. Because if we don't stop this threat, one day we're all just going to get, they're going to pull a switch and, man, what am I doing out here in the ocean? Drowning myself for, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> look, look at Gotham Shield, what's going on the 24th here in New Jersey, in the New York City area with the nuclear mm. Uh, oh yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's and the mainstream media is not covering it. They're not even mentioning it. Well, uh, no, I've heard nothing about. What is that? Yeah, what is it? You want to tell them, Ben? Well, it's um, it's part of the old world order, uh, the old cabal trying to stir up more mess for for uh, Trump to interfere with, and, mm. and and it could be anything. I mean, it's the same thing with Matthew. I mean. They tried to round us up then, and there goes FEMA, put us in the FEMA camps, and, and we have benevolent help, and, and I'm part of that. I really am. Dick, I just sent you a link to uh, a, web, a website that I uh, <clears throat> put together about a couple of weeks ago, and it's from a web program that I had to do in college. I did it five years ago, um, <clears throat> and... You can share that with the people in chat if you want. And this to get in contact with me, it's not it's not even built yet, but it's something I built five years ago, knowing that it was going to be there. Mm. And so uh, it's for anybody that is a targeted individual or um, thinks they are, I suggest you read the book first and book one. Um, and I will provide more links to actual uh, evidence 
uh, furthermore after this show because it's just going to grow. Mm. What? And it's going to it's going to be for free. I'm, I don't want to charge money for anything. That I believe, like Wes Pender says, we, this information should be out there. Yeah, you know, but I, I still got to pay forty six thousand dollar pass loan off. <laughs> um, Michael and Julia. And of course, my publishers have helped me. He, you know, he deserves as much targeting that he's had just to get my book out to you know, be compensated. <laughs> um, for Michael and Julia, the Gotham Shield is a mock drill based on a nuclear attack in the New York City metropolitan area. Wow. Wow. On April 24th. Are they doing it now because of all that, the threats from North Korea? Well, yeah. Now, that's very interesting, all of that stuff that's going on. I heard there was something in New Orleans and San Francisco that the electricity did go out in those cities yesterday. Yes, supposedly. But then again, this is what, like what Ben is saying. What can you trust what's out there in the media unless you're at the actual location to verify it yourself? I mean, we hear so many yeah. stories, and that also involves, you know, what we hear a lot of the fake news, propaganda, etc. So it's all tied. Well, there were people on Facebook that were writing in that they lost electricity. Mm. Uh, there was one woman, uh, she was a nurse at a hospital, and the backup generators came out. And I think they were forewarned there might have been some something. And she got a hint that it had something to do with... She also had to stay at the hospital, and I think it, you know, she was forewarned that it was a, a drill for losing electricity, EMF attack, or nuclear attack. Um, I don't know, it's pretty scary. It is very, and you very, very so what, what can we do, Ben, to uh negate all this or you know, not be a part of it? Is there a the first thing you have to recognize is the fact that what I'm telling you is nothing but the truth, the whole truth. And if you do, if you do feel that you're being attacked, you got to ignore it. Plus, if it's negative, just go the other way. You don't want to fight. You don't want to resist. You don't want to be what they want you to do. That's what the artificial intelligence is trying to do. They're, they're allowing us to go online. Tonight and talk about it. They want us to tell people that uh, hmm. it's there. But, and but he, Ben, you you mentioned. I think we spoke about this earlier, uh, Michael, Julia, yourself, and and I. Um, that there could be preventive measures a person can take. Like you were speaking about this band, a magnetic band, uh, right, right, that you were wearing. Oh, oh, oh yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> it's simply put. In uh, 2013, when I uh, first found out about accidentally discovering how you can uh, um, disrupt the uh, nanotechnology inside of us, um, I heard another guy who has a website called MorgellonsCure.com. And this guy is actual uh, stage three out of five. Uh, severe uh, lesions and fibers growing out of his arm, and the doctor says, "You're just imagining that." Ha ha ha! Isn't, isn't that crazy, God? Isn't that I sad? mean, look, look I, I've got a friend who somebody led to me uh, uh, to Facebook, and she she's really far gone. She she actually had a blood uh, being taken when she went to see the last doctor, and it it was it was like gray sludge. And uh, the nurse went running out of the office, and they escorted her out of the building. Hmm. Wow. And, and so this guy, he uh, accidentally discovered uh, uh, an interruption of, uh, of the nanotechnology. It, it operates off uh, the Wi-Fi. It operates off the Bluetooth. It operates right through your television, your uh, smart meter, your smartphone, your eye. I, I don't want to say it because I'll get sued. You know, uh, your health devices. Mm. You know, um, right? And, and it it gets its power from I would say the Tesla secret power um, that's hidden within the frequency, and it's actually radiation. It's acquiring the radiation through your body from the frequencies, so it can. Uh, replicate and and whatever you breathe in the air from the hidden 
uh, payloads that uh, they're not going to ever you know, admit to. Um, I mean, it's so visibly out there that even Congress has filed a, a law that you can't sue the government anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for anything. So it's it's definitely uh, a, a no win situation. So when when I listen to uh, this guy talk about this accidental discovery, I said, "Wow, that's cool." So I was thinking, what makes an EMP? Well, being a, an engineer and architect, and I'm a pretty knowledgeable kind of guy. I uh, I looked up um, two attracting super magnets. They uh, they close together is an electromagnetic pulse. If you pull them apart, the field in between the net, the north and south poles, uh, and if they're really super strong magnets, and you put them on opposite sides of your wrist, you know, north and south facing each other, and you wrap yourself with a, a you know a wrist wrap. Um, and, and I've gone through four prototypes. Instead of just wrapping it with a, a, a stretchable wrist wrap, I decided to go get a, a, a Ace um, pre-made tennis elbow made out of, uh, you know, fake leather and silk. And so I got smart, and I, uh, I super glued or gorilla glued the uh, – bought my own Felcro at Walmart and – and attached them inside, threw away the, the little bubble thing they sell with it, and, and I put them on my wrist, both of them. So when I first did this, I said, wow, why should I just do the wrist? Let me get all four extremities. I know I was definitely infested with these things. But the time that my late friend looked at the these nanobots that come out of my skin, mm -hmm. I knew for a fact that I was highly saturated. I had been all my life. And then, so I did... My wife comes home early. Hey, do you want to go to the flea market? Sure, I'll go with you. I'm driving in my van, a brand new van I got, and it wasn't even two months old. And, and uh, I'm pulling into the parking lot, and uh, I start getting really hot, hot. Ears got hot. The ringing in my ear just went exponential. And she says, are you all right? I'm, like, I'm having a hard time breathing. You want to go to the ER? Oh, no, no, let's just go in and walk around a little bit. I just need to stretch my leg. And I snatched all these things off of me and left them on the floorboard of the van. And five minutes later, I'm still sweating bullets. And, and she, are you okay? I said, no, I don't think I am. I think I need to go home. She says, okay, well, let's go. I'll get home. And I put on the a wrist device, uh, blood pressure you know, device, and, and I checked it. It said 117 over 59. That's pretty normal. But my heart rate was 195 beats a minute. Wow. Wow. That, that's impossible. That is really fast. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I was killing a whole bunch of them. That's what I think. And um, they were uh, freaking out, and they were trying to relay back to the cell tower. Uh, hey, we need some help. We're getting killed. You know? <laughs> so after an hour and 13 minutes – of three and a half beats a second, it just stopped. It just quit. Mm, mm. I got my breath back. Well, that was on a Saturday. So, two days later, I already had an, a, a, a setup appointment with my doctor, who um, <clears throat> who uh, is paid for by the AMA and all that stuff, and the lies they give you, and the poisons they prescribe you, and all that. And uh, sure enough. He says, the blood work you gave me two weeks ago came in, and I'm going to give you an A-. minus." I said, what does that mean? He says, uh, you're in great health. you got the body of about a 30-year-old. Huh. Really? Then I handed him the device. I said, what does that say? He backed up a little bit and looked at it. Holy cow, your heart should have popped in five minutes. <laughs> I said, I know. Man. How did you, how did you survive that? So I'm in great physical shape, you just said. Really? That's how physical the, the job that I do as a career is. I mean, I sweat a lot. I drink a lot of water. Uh, and, and, of course, I didn't do enough research, smart as I'm supposed to be, you know, to, uh, <laughs> re right. to research magnet therapy. That's all it took. And after reading the side effects, I went, hey, God, boy, how stupid I really am. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've experimented with, with it for almost four years now, and I now – have a device that uh, I could just strap on real quick 
and uh, I wear them for 20 minutes a day. So that disconnects the network. Now, Dr. Robert Duncan says, but once your, your, your brain and your body's mapped out with your resonant signature, uh, uh, he doesn't think anything else can stop the communication. Well, I disagree. I, I do believe that uh, I could disrupt them telling me what to do, but everybody around me, they're not wearing these things. So they can tell them what to do because they can see you. They know where I'm at. They're GPS, by the way. I mean, they can they could go from a satellite, and uh, it gets there. Hmm. Well, I think I've covered about everything I you can. You have, you have. Listen, I, 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 we have a few minutes left. I want you to uh, let people know uh, once again where they can find your book, um, and uh, if you're, you know, going to be doing anything else, um, how they can get in contact with you so that we can, uh, you know. Get some get some interest flowing here. Okay, um, my publisher is Neely Worldwide Publishing. Um, you can uh, you can Google their name, and you'll find the authors tab. And my name is Ben Davis Jr. And you can also go to targetedindividualforce.com slash targeted underscore individual underscore force. Uh, slash welcome dot html but if you just put in the dot com it'll come up to that and this is the website that i'm going to build upon for any targeted individuals now to jump into this book i think in fact i would advise everyone to go get book one because it explains in detail what i was what i went through uh who i'm connected with politically in florida and that's one thing I did cover. So, and that that's incident at Fort Polk, right? Incident at Fort Polk, right. yes. Okay. And that's that's kind of part one. This is part two. Right. And you can also uh, Google, uh, you know, the title of the book at Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Uh, uh, but I suggest that you get it quicker through Neely Worldwide Publishing. Excellent. Excellent. I, I also wanted to let people know that there is a really good website that you can access to learn about not only all of the stuff that Ben's talking about, but a lot of the other stuff that's questionable that's going on in this world today. It's called Educate Yourself, and, and the URL is educate-yourself dot org, and it just educate-yourself.org. Um, and it just covers everything. So if you really want to get into this and, and uh, you know, develop some sort of knowledge base, Educate Yourself is a great site for that. I don't, Do you know that site, Ben? I haven't been to it. I've been studying so hard. I'm done with my research. I've yeah. got the book out. All we need to do is tell everybody in the world, y'all need to read this. Yeah. And wake up. It's not just telling you to wake up it's, it's, or ascension and all that stuff. It's all about what you don't see will kill you. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> ben, ben, thank you for being with us tonight. And I'm going to have to have you on again in the future. I, I'm sure you're not going to stop writing. I, I have a feeling that there's going to be more coming out from you. So uh, keep us posted because uh, we, we'd like to get you back and talk a little bit more about this stuff. And uh, wow. Yeah, I have to see how far this goes and where it goes and how it goes. I have it written already. I mean, I've spent my whole life doing this, and, and it's just a matter of putting it together in the right perspective. Wow, yeah. I, I bet, man. 40 years of research. <laughs> it's a lot. Actually, it's longer than that. Yeah, I started right. at age six. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. It, it has been wonderful having you here. Uh, and like I said, we're going to get you back on because I'm sure there's a lot more that we need to hear. Uh, so everybody out there, you heard it. You heard it right from Ben. I want you to uh, get the book, read the book, get part two, read part two, educate yourself, because knowledge is power. So uh, have a good night, everybody. Good have night, good everybody. Week. Good night, and Ben. We Bye. Thank next, you. Uh, before we go, uh, we're going to have a gentleman by the name of Charles Stansberg on the show. 
uh, and I'll tell you guys a little bit about him through the week on Facebook and uh, uh, Twitter. So hang in there, guys. God bless. Let's have a good week. Take care. Good night.